Welcome, everyone. My name is Maureen Antunes, Festival Director for Spark Animation, and I want to welcome you to this session in our Meet the Filmmakers series, where we speak to filmmakers whose films have been selected for the festival. I'm very, very pleased to have with me today the directors of A Crowd in the Pool, uh, Alexandra Miot and Jean-Sebastien Amel. In addition to being selected to the festival, the film is actually also the recipient of the Best Canadian Film Prize. Congratulations and welcome to the festival. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, for, <laughs> thanks two times. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Before we talk about the movie itself, I just wanted to get a little bit of background about you two and how you guys first met and then started working together. Um, it's a, a, a really nice story, I think. Um, because uh, we were we started working together in animation, actually. Um, I was the animator. Yeah, I know. <laughs> he was the editor. <laughs> yeah, and uh, for uh, we were doing a music video uh, for a band in Quebec called uh, Carquois, and um, we we were supposed to uh, to deliver the video clip uh, the next morning to Music Plus, which is like the MTV uh, in Montreal. Uh, but uh, so I had the I, I didn't sleep. At, all night as I was editing, trying to figure things. Like Sandra was uh, sending me stuff from the studio. Um, so that was the first time, and uh, we it was well well received. We got the number one uh, pick of the week, I think, something like that. And uh, we carry on. Uh, yeah, we developing. thought we thought we worked well together, and I thought he was cute too. But that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, we work very well together. We're very complementary. We don't have uh, big egos because it's important when you work two uh, two directors together. It's not always easy. So yeah, we we trust each other a lot. Like we exchange ideas. Sometimes if we don't agree, we think about it. We don't say no right away. We're just like, uh, I'm not sure, but I'm going to think. And often we just meet in the middle and it works very well. Yeah, I'm in the middle, but I wouldn't say in the middle. We just... Or it's either or, like, yeah, we, no, we, this we, idea is better. If yeah, we just yeah. realized that, okay, my idea wasn't the best after all. You're right. Or vice versa. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I, I don't think we meet in the middle. I think we just... I agree what at in the end is what the idea what, the idea we prefer. Yeah. But that's amazing because that takes a lot, like you mentioned, trust. And that's so important because I mean it's easy to get wrapped up in, well, my idea is better. But uh, like regardless of the be like being able to see it from that other perspective and you know, like step back is so important. Was that something that you guys had from the beginning? Or has that sort of developed over the years that you've been working together? <laughs> I'll talk more for myself because I, since at the beginning I was more the animator, the one who draws, it's so long to animate that, you know, you can get carried away, you do a scene, and then I show it to him and he's like, well, I'm not sure, Anna, and I've spent days on it. So it it's very hard at the beginning to say like, well, no, we're going to keep it that way and that's it. So it, it was a bit of adjustment more on my side that I was more like, you know, I animated that and I'm not changing it. But uh, with time, we, we changed the way we work too. Um, not like just animate and then criticize. We we do more like a very detailed animatic before. And we it, it's even the script. We, we rewrite the script during the animation. We're very uh, organic in terms of process. It's not like, okay, the script and then the storyboard and then the animation. It's, it's all kind of a melting pot together, but it works so far. So that that's the way we we found was the best to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I think I think that helps is that before being uh, filmmakers, we are just movie lovers, animation or or live. So um, often my my point is, okay, you did this uh, great animation, but. If we think ourselves as spectator, and that's from my background background as an editor, you just have to to look at it. Okay, is it great as a spectator? Uh, and say, are, would you love to see that movie? Yes or no? And that's the the real answer. And sometimes that's uh, when we we take a we were able to take a step back and say, okay, well maybe uh, it, we have already seen a movie like that. Uh, or no, it's a cliche or it's not 
or is great and we carry on. <laughs> I, I, I thought that your names sounded familiar. So I went looking back and I realized that I'd seen one of your films before. So, uh, yeah, Mademoiselle oh, yes. played oh. at Spark in 2020. Yes. yes, yes. And that film looks much, much different than a Capital. I know. Can you talk a little bit about the progression of your visual style? Because it changed quite significantly from that to your second film. And yeah. now to this one, it's even more refined. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about that progression? Uh, I would say that Mademoiselle Pigeon, although we, we, we enjoy it, we enjoy the film, but it's le much less personal. It's much more academic, I would say, in terms of uh, of the style of the story. Um, uh, we did a film just after that that was much more improvised called uh, No Title, but Sit, which I believe I did not submit to Spark just because it was self-distributed and there was so much work to do and we were doing a crab in a pool at the same time. So, you know, I did not distribute it as much as I wanted at that time. But uh, this one was much more improvised and we realized we had more fun doing it. Uh, the response was also better and it was more personal. It was you know, the stories were were inspired by our lives and we did the same thing for Crab in the Pool. And Mademoiselle Pigeon was more like a, a tale, maybe well, not necessarily children tale, but, you know, it, it was less personal, I would say. That's the biggest difference. It was fun. It was a nice exercise and we liked the movie, but I would say it's not necessarily representative but of the work we want to do. Uh, it was all, also... Um... First try after uh, maybe five years, uh, we did, we we didn't do any short movies before that, but only five years ago. Um, so it was like a really stepping in the the the, the pool. Um, and Alexandra was very curious about the um, how do you say puppet animation? Puppet uh, animation. It's kind of it's fake puppet. It's like. A... It was it was still done in Photoshop, but you know to have the the movement is not like two D animation frame by frame. It was more like doing a puppet, but they they were not real. You know they were not yeah. like real paper dolls, but there was the paper doll kind of effect. So. It was more beautiful aesthetically, I think. Yeah, maybe. But um, at the point we were just saying to ourselves that aesthetic is not we we don't it's short movies. We don't have a uh, limited funds and we we realized that maybe the the story is more important um than the aesthetic and the aesthetic that's what takes the longest time to produce when it's so detailed and so complex so we try just to set something really simple it's uh with the the the, the previous movie before um a crab in the pool no title it worked very well and so we carried on that style but a bit better and uh we're also doing that and a bit better for our next one. So let's talk a little bit about A Cloud in the Pool. And you talk a little bit about this in your director's statement uh, about how uh, this film is, the story of the film is very personal to you in your own way. Can you elaborate a little bit more about where the idea came from and how you decided that this was the story that you wanted to tell? Just to be sure, is this going to be shown before or after the movie? Because it I will actually, it'll actually be on, like the film will already have screened at the festival okay. and this is going to be available afterwards. Well, there's no spoilers or things. No like spoilers to worry about, but we can about mark it. it. We can <laughs> mark it as spoilers. If you haven't seen the film yet, there's spoilers. Stop now. <laughs> yes. Um, well, the idea, I, I'm, I'm sure you've seen that. Um it's about cancer in the end. Um, I had cancer, breast cancer, uh, five, six years ago, six years ago. And it was about at that time that it it was just a little bit, uh, it was a, a bit of an idea that was in my mind. Um, it's about uh, the Amazons too, the mythology of the Amazon, because it's, although it's also the Greek mythology, but it's also associated with breast cancer because women, if they have a, a surgery, they, they have their breasts removed, and it's it's kind of um, it's a, not a nickname, but they, they, 
they name themselves Amazon because they're warriors too and stuff like that. So it came from there. It was very different at the beginning. It was still two kids. The mother was not there, but the story was a bit different. And working and working, we, we condensed it into like, okay, it's going to happen during one day at the pool. What would happen between those two kids that are dealing with the absence and the death of their mother? Uh, and that the, 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 the girl is also dealing with the fact that she might have that cancer inside her at some point because of uh, um, the word that escaped me. Um, um, genetic. Gen genetic, yeah. And, and the little boy, it's another issue because he, he's not really accepting the fact that his mom is gone. He's, he's living in his own world and he thinks that she might come back because she, she was that Amazon she she had her breast removed, so she's kind of mythological at the same time, so magical, so maybe she'll come back. Yeah, she's fighting maybe in in the, the fantastic world, but in reality, he knows. But that's when he got the slap. It's like a wake-up call, and that's why he's so sad there. And uh, Jean-Sébastien's mother had can breast cancer too, but a long time ago, and she's fine too. We were lucky for that. Yeah. So uh, there was his experience too. Yeah, and my cousin too. But after uh, we were writing it, so it's just sad. Ah. And I remember the first draft when Alexandra showed me just a piece of paper or uh, with the, the first draft ideas. But it was not the same movie, but it was a piece of her life. And uh, the essence of the movie, and I was in tears uh, the whole time I was reading. And mm -hmm. I'm still emotional every time I see it. Even every time I think about it, but when I was uh, for me a movie uh, can be, be many things, but the best movie for me is something emotional, uh, something that will change me, make make me uh, more connected to myself and better hopefully. So when I was so touched by the first draft, I, I knew uh, other people would be because it was like a direct connection for me because of her, you know, that, uh, again, uh, it gets emotional. <laughs> but, uh, when, when uh, Theo and, um, and I, uh, his sister uh, are hugging each other, uh, the dog really was her, her and I hugging ourselves before our operation, cancer operation, things like that. So it's not the same story, but it is. And, other people came to us, who, people who have uh, seen the movie, people we don't know, and some people just came to us, um, and, oh my God, it's, it's my story. Um, I lost my mother. Many people just came to us in tears. Uh, so uh, I don't know. I'm looking for that in the movie, not, not to, to be sad, but to be touched. And I think we touched some people. Oh, I, I think so too. In that finale, I, we're going we're gonna to talk about that finale a little bit later. But before we get there, I wanted to also ask you about this other uh, part to the story, which is this kind of coming of age uh, for for Zoe. And I mean, one of the things that you know has long been this thing for for girls is you know we want boobs. Yeah, <laughs> like there's this mentality that you know we need boobs. Yeah, so you have this. This dual, and it, that that's particularly clear in that scene in the bathroom where she's standing in front of the mirror. And yeah. I'm like, this scene works on like so many levels because you have, you know, this, the, her mom has died from cancer. So she could have this gene that, you know, might make her more susceptible to that. You also have this, this, this thing in your mind about, you know, you want, you're trying to sort of make them grow. How yeah. do I do this? And you know the monster pulls the monster that monster thing out. It's it's like horrific. Like it's really creepy. And then you cut to her running through the pool, bumping into this woman, <laughs> and all of a sudden it's this like almost comedic moment that like yeah. brings levity to the whole thing. That scene though, I've I've watched it like three or four times. It's <laughs> it just works so so well. So can you talk a little bit about when this idea to also have like this idea of Zoe as like growing up and this, you know, loss of youth and also like 
tie it into this concept of, you know, breast cancer. And then, you know, you lift the whole thing up with this like just short comedic moment. Yeah. The, the, the bimbo, we call her the bimbo. I don't remember when she arrived because I think maybe we hesitated a little bit about her, but just a little bit because it can be too much. It can be like, as you say, you want to have that fine line between, okay, the comedy and you're you're out of the tension. It's good to have moments that it's not tense for like 11 minutes, but you don't want to be a caricature either. So I'm, I don't Wait, remember what, 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 when we, she... That, yeah, but we were trying to reset things because uh, in the bathroom, the, the tension gets really high. That comes from our love of horror movies mm -hmm. like Alien. We like that, and we were not trying to copy it, but just to to make up something like that a bit ourselves. But um, the comedic part of the bimbo, um, it's it's also because uh, when you're a teen, when I was a teen, I, I was really confused about everything. Um, I was not. I was imagining myself as, uh, I don't know, many things. Uh, so obviously confused. And I, I think Chloe is very confused because when she's touching her breast in the bathroom, she's touching them to realize they're not big enough to, uh, to be the taste for guys yet. And when she compares to the bimbo, but also she's mimicking her mother when she was doing her own test for cancer. Yeah, so everything her, is confused yeah. like that. Um, but she she is she is confused even at the beginning when the that guy touches her breast. It's like it's it's like she doesn't want it. You know, she she it's like she's not ready for it. She's really at the cusp between she's a child and she's a teen, and she just doesn't know where she is. And she has that little kid that keeps pestering her all the time with. His imagination and stuff. So yeah, yeah, she's very confused. But I'm I'm happy that you you really understood the scene in the bathroom and the that that conflict between I want to be grown up and I want to be a woman, but at the same time it me it can mean something extremely scary. So that that's what we wanted. So I'm glad that you <laughs> you understood the scene like that. It, it comes through really well and it's so effective. I really, really love that moment. But there's so many great moments in this movie. And, you know, you talk a little bit about, you know, how the bimbo was something that you weren't quite sure if it was maybe going too far. Can you also talk a little bit about like the 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 dream like quality of the film? Because, you know, Theo has these dreams and sometimes they're kind of like nightmares, like the whole melting yeah. thing it can be kind of scary. Can you talk a little bit about, you know, Coming up with that concept and then when you were actually starting to, you know, develop the look of the film and, and, you know, creating your storyboards, at any point did you think that maybe this is too much? Maybe we've gone too far. Is this going to work? Can you talk a little bit about that, that sort of uh, dreamscape? We were uh, going back and forth, exactly like you said, is it maybe sometimes too much, but most of the time I think too little. Uh, for example, when he was seeing uh, the Olympic Stadium in Montreal, um, it, it was not. Now it, I think there's a Dionysos drinking wine. Yeah. Uh, there's the naked woman Venus, Venus my, for ID. and uh, Zeus. I think is licking Venus. It's soft, but before that, it was less soft. It was it was a uh, soft, even softer. Like it was a. Uh, no edge at all. So um, a better example of that, it's not about you, but about the, the um, about Zoe, but with the same concept because they both have their visions. Uh, when she is going back in the, the bathroom and the pool and she sees her mother, that was another point that we debated a lot. Uh, we gonna going to talk about cancer or not. We decided not to see the work because we wanted the spectator to, to do that work themselves themselves but the vision of the mother we say okay now she she's breastless that's what the movie is about and we have to see this it's a movie we have to see it um that's another thing that we went further to, to just we're gonna be more and i don't know if it's, it's not edgy but 
more visual about it, uh, more a bit rude, shocking. It's, it's not easy to see. Uh, um, mostly well, if you can relate and you have a, a relative uh, that happened to to her. But to uh, to to go more into the terms of animation in your question, um, the, it's the idea of transition. We had that in the film uh, No Title that we did before. And that movie, how it worked, I, I did it in four months. It was a bit more me. Um, and what I would do, there was no scenario. There was no storyboard. I would just do a scene. And at night, before going to sleep, I would think, how can I do a fun transition between this scene and that scene? And not just, like, we didn't want to do cuts. We said, how can I be imaginative? Because... We're not doing live, we're doing animation. We can do anything we want. So for this film, we took a bit the same concept of of you know not 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 planning everything. And I think that's why there's a bit of a dreamy quality to the film because that's that's how we were working too. You know, we were we were going at night and say, okay, let's think how we would transition from this segment to that segment. And so, what we realize when we see the film after is that it, it's like going from one dreamscape to another, to another, you know, it's like you have the, the, the sidewalk that spins and then Tio that runs into the sky, it becomes the pool. And then we're with the sister in the bathroom and, you know, it's like the weird, but you, it's like a dream in you know, some way that, you know, you, you, you just wake up somewhere and it's fine. It's the logic of the dream. So we we wanted to do that. And yeah, we wanted to to use the medium of animation as much as possible. So yeah, not doing cuts that are, you know, we, we would do live if we just want to do cut, cut, cut. Because our style, I would say, is not the most technically... Um, not impressive, but, you know, there's some animators, they do... Uh, uh, Every sand day, animation day. and and they use techniques that are so so developed and i mean my animation is simple it's like little drawings and flat colors but i think that our strength is more in the transition and the imagination that we put and use animation to do that uh, and but balancing that with and because if you're maybe too uh um well, like what you say, um, the animation is too uh, explosive. Let's say there's too much. There's uh, it, it could maybe uh, not, not a gimmick. Not a gimmick, but it could take the place of the narrative. Mm. Uh, so we're always trying to do the balance, have, have a strong narrative, but also uh, be sure to uh, use animation as it should. Well, this is interesting because you are making really great use of the, of the art form, right? Like you, like you say, you're 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 not if you if you could have easily made this as a live action film if you were just going to do a bunch of edits with yeah. a bunch of VFX. Yeah. But you've made some really interesting choices and dynamic choices that keep the story moving forward. I'm curious, Jean Sebastian, as an editor, like with the background ending, what how does that? work in your brain like is, is it different for you to work like this where you're kind of being more creative with the the transitions rather than you know here's the cut um but because we do a lot of animatics it's um it's the editing is like the the it's really the directing also um and we're trying so many things before the movie is done with with just little drawings uh the music is there we work every frame so that the editing is really the, the transition are, are part of the editing. Um, Alexandra is really good to think about this all the time. Nicely. Uh, yeah, but uh, we, I believe in that too. In the morning, I'm, I'm not a early uh, bird person. Um, so in the morning, I'm really come not fully awake, but strongly connected to feelings and to intuition. And um, Alexandra is like that, but more, more late at night, I'd say. Mm. Yeah. So we use those moments. And also when we're just in nature, it's not in front of computers, uh, and the mind is more free. Uh, and sometimes just the ideas comes like that. 
and uh, we capture them and use them. And, uh, but as the editor, um, it's, no, it's really fun to do that because it, it but it's so long. It's a, the difference between a live action movie that I would edit, the, the, the footage is there. You can change a bit of things. You, you can, the, the timings in between every cut, of course, but right now, but for example, the, our next movie, there's a, a call sequence. That's that a, oh, you snap one shot? a one shot sequence, the opening of the film. But it's it's like a minute and a half. If if it would be just a live action movie, it's going well. Here's your one minute and a half. Yeah, mm. that cut is done in the one minute. <laughs> but for in our film, uh, we have to, to the the editing part is to time every action, uh, and it's the same for every um, every every single plan uh, scene. Oh shot or scene that you see in a, a crab in the pool. It started with just uh, a couple of key frame that I edit uh, to my liking. Uh, I kind of leave, leaves me a lot of, uh, yeah. I, I can do whatever I want with it. I, she doesn't differ too much. Uh, I ask her for her, for approval and she does the same for the, 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 the animation, but that's where we trust each other. We're very, where we, she's better than me for animation. I'm better for editing. So we, we share the work like that. And both parts are, are the direction, actually. So how long were you guys working on A Crab in the Pool? Like from, from when you first decided that you were going to make this film and that it was going to be your next project to the time when you said, okay, it's done. Um, I'm trying to... I'm trying to time it with when we receive the, the finance thing, usually, because that's, that's how it works. Um, and sometimes we, we overlap projects, because Clap in a Pool, I think, um, I did the, the first draft of the scenario in, in 2021, and we were supposed to finish it we pushed it because we always push our project. It always takes longer because there was a four or five months of the other film, uh, no title that I had to kind of squeeze between the, the, the production of this. So I would say it's, it's usually around two years. Yeah. Year now, two that. Years. yeah. And yeah, there is always overlap right now. We're doing another one, but there's already another one that's been written and, kind of already starting to think about it because like I said, our ideas, the transition, the dreamy aspect and stuff, it comes, it, it doesn't come in a week, you know, you have to kind of make it uh, brew a long time. So yeah, we, we, we have two films coming in the next two years. We take, we take a lot of notes when we see a movie and you know, even if it's not the same uh, story, but just like, okay, this is really great. The feeling that we have uh, in this scene and uh, we, we just uh, screen grab that and uh, re use it as a reference to, uh, to, to analyze a bit how they got the emotion right there. And so when we, when we know that it's going to be good for our purpose. That's amazing. And, you know, it's, it's great to hear that we're going to get more from you in the coming years. But before we talk sort of any more about what's coming, I wanted to, to talk a little bit more about that final scene in the film, because it, it, it it's so touching um, and so emotional. And it even though the film is, um, I don't want to say dark, but it deals with some, you know, heavy, heavy subject matter. Yeah. It ends in a positive note, like that final moment where they, they, they hug and, you know, she doesn't even let him, like, he doesn't even let her finish the sentence. That's just such a, like, I feel like such a natural emotion, like, especially with a sibling. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about how that scene came together and, you know, the need, maybe there, I don't know if maybe there was a need, but the, the spot that you should finish on like a happy note. I'll start um, because I, I, it was a worse version. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, but, but the the because um, uh, the the essence of the, the the first scene was to be really uh, crude, like that's the reality. It's it's nice they're getting back together, and but it's also a bittersweet because the the mother's already dead, uh, maybe a year ago, something like that. But in the storytelling. At the, she dies at the end of the story. 
and that's why the end is sad. But at, and what can you say? There's no words for that. Uh, all you have is is each other. A, a, a word is not will never be strong enough. It's only love that can uh, help when you're there and you lost a mother is God or a kid. Uh, so there's no words uh, to relieve that pain. And yeah, it's 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 a hope, but it's not. They have each it's other. Not, it's not a happy ending. But it's 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 a hope that things will get better with time, and but it's not magical either. Like, ha, everything is fixed, and we but love the, each other. And but the, but the setting also was an image I had. Um, I wanted to be at the pool, and I wanted to see uh, the cement, the beton. Um, concrete? That, the, yeah, the, com concrete, the concrete concrete of the pool, and uh, not a nice one. Something raw. Uh, something that represents reality because reality is raw. If, if you want to do something, it's not going to be easy uh, for most most people. Um, so I wanted something really raw, uh, and the, the 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 bad scene that Axel was talking about yeah, it just... was uh, the uh, uh, a version where uh, Theo, uh, where um, that was the Zoe way. accepts to to uh, the the, the to buy an ice cream, and it's like and we were. Do you want to go buy an ice cream? Yes, and then and they leave, and it's like, okay, that is so cheap. <laughs> when we thought about it, it's like, no, that's bad. That's but, really bad. And that's also when I saw that uh, we were thinking inspiration and notes on other material we like. We're seeing a, a great um, emotional TV show called uh, Hill House, and the, the series is really uh, hard and really heavy emotionally but the end it's really magical but maybe in an unrealistic way yeah, it's too happy so it kind of and when, sours the theory because it's just too much of a happy ending the happy so. is confetti but the everything is not about in this show so we were singing our show if it ends with uh, okay let's go get the ice cream oh thank you my little my big sister uh it's that's not the message it's it's that, not realistic. That, that would be a movie for kids more, maybe. Um, and I don't think it's a movie for a kid, but maybe. I don't know, really. <laughs> we're, we're not lo we were not looking for it to be for yeah. kids. Um, because we're, I think, with that movie and the, the one before that, we're just saying to ourselves, uh, we want to make a movie we'd love to watch. And before we were more asking ourselves what other people would like to watch. Um, but when you ask yourself that question, you, you will never know what other people want because it's not yourself. So I think the, the right question, I, I rather, I prefer this approach. Yeah. But, but yeah, it, it was, we were not sure at the beginning to have that very long last shot because it's long, you know, there's a lot of silence. There's, Really, nothing is being said. And then, yeah, we decided to try it. Super long hug and then just cut to black. And no music. There's also no music during the whole film. So it's a little bit, a bit more realistic, although it's not. But, you know. It feels uh, real. Yeah. And just to have the sound of the, the water and the dark screen and then the credits to have that, that feeling lingering a little bit. Yeah, um, yeah. The sound of water was to uh, evoke the nature of things, because nature is like that. You're gonna lose uh, the one you love one day, and uh, that's that's nature. So that that was la that was why there uh, is this. Uh, and there's also a bird song like the 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 goyla, the goyla, yeah, the, the, um, the seagull, seagull, and a, a little bit crappy uh, birds, <laughs> <laughs> and. To, <laughs> It's real, and sometimes reality is still a bit crappy. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, but but so this I, I, at the same time, it's actually crappy, but uh, it's a touching moment of love in a crappy setting. Yeah, it's beautiful too. It yeah, has beauty and crap. <laughs> no, no, they're, they're totally, and that's the thing. Like it's that ending is so affecting because it feels so authentic and so real, right? And it's sometimes hard to grasp why it feels that way but there is like that emotion that comes through based on like everything that you've seen up until now and then that moment itself that like th th that last minute interaction between uh, Theo and Zoe just feels so 
just so real. Like, I don't really know what else to say. Like, it feels like something I would say to my sister. Wow, well, thank you. Yeah, yeah. we're trying to build uh, the scenes with also with the previous scene. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, every scene, they're, they're, they have their own purpose to exist, but also they're meant to prepare for the next scene. And um, that was uh, one of my best moments when, uh, I think my favorite moments of, in the movie is at the end when uh, we reveal that the reason for the, the fake binoculars is because that was the tool, the, the dying mother, because she, she couldn't say to her son, I'm going to die, but she said, look, I'm not going to be there, but with this, you know, I'm in the magical world. And that idea came at the end uh, when we, the movie was uh, partly uh, like three quarter edited. And that, that was not the scene and it was never in the script. But when we were looking, looking at the 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 the, the, pro, the, the, the editing in process, where you just thought that it would be good. And uh, and, and the, the scene that prepared that was when Zoe is with her mother. That's shocking. But also at the end of that scene, it's okay. Have you tell? Have you told Tio? And uh, okay, how, how are you gonna tell your son that you're gonna die? Yeah. Oh. Again, there, there's no words. No, That's, that was the magical binoculars. <laughs> That's amazing, and that and that the magical binoculars and and anything else that sort of came up in the film while you were sort of like in the middle of production. Were there any other instances where? You know, you were either deep in a scene or even toward the end of uh, filmmaking that you thought, OK, there's something missing here or maybe this would be something good to add. And at what point do you stop tinkering because you just. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just for, for, and for the magical binoculars are actually him when he was a kid, but he was older yeah. than his sister he used to do that with her so yeah, that sure. that you took yeah. from there like you're she real. was crying all the time uh during uh car traveling and i was doing like this in the back seats to uh <laughs> to, to make her stop crying <laughs> i'm i'm trying to think of something i know we didn't we, we didn't know how to end it um, no, no, we knew that it would. No, end. no, no, but I mean, like the scene with the bathroom, like you said, it was it was late in the process that we were uh, that we had the idea of Zoe meeting her mom in the bathroom, and then Theo talking with her mom. That was really far into the process because it was very different from the first draft scenario. And sometimes when you do a first draft of a scenario, you kind of get attached to it. Uh, it is not as good as what is there right now, but you know, sometimes it's hard just to, you're used to that structure, so. But there was, the, in the first uh, version of the script, there were maybe five additional settings. Oh yeah, there and, was uh, a there, lot of there, settings. There was a father, uh, but the father was not there. He was a bit dr a drunk and uh, sleeping on the, the day. Um, so, so at the end, it's a short movie, so it was too complex to, to tell the yes. whole story. Yeah. And that's, that's it's, not a per, it's not a perfect movie, of, of course. Uh, we maybe the opening has other ideas, but yeah. that's to answer your question: when, when are you done with the scene? Uh, when it's we, we when it's done, like uh, we we edited five minutes. We're not gonna change a lot of things because we already wasted too much time rewriting and trying things. Um, at that point, I'm, we're just gonna uh, change frames um, because the audio. I'm editing the audio at the same time, but I'm giving the audio to uh, to another guy uh, who does that for a living and takes my references. And sometimes it's different, so we're just gonna edit a bit. Uh, like I remember, I was. Telling him, sorry, I'm really sorry I tried everything, but I have to add the five frames. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but in the audio part, the other thing, it's complicated. Uh, um, but at that point, we, yeah. we just think, okay, we did our best. Next. I'd say, yeah, the, the main thing now that I think about it, we really simplify the story. And I think that's that's what works because... You always tend to have like a huge scenario for almost a, a feature film and you want to cram everything because you have so many good ideas. 
And that's how we decided, no, it's going to be not even a day. It's a couple of hours, two sets, and basically two main characters with the mom. Uh, compared to before, it was just way too complicated. So. Yeah, and, and all, but also the, like the bathroom for Zoe, it's her mind. And so we uh, we do we're doing metaphors like okay it's a bathroom they're setting up the pool but really it's what's happening in her mind she thinks of her mother the the bathroom is really dark it's confused uh, what's happened there um, and Theo but it's like joyful and nature so it's uh, anything goes um, but when he's in reality it's sad. He's never really happy in reality. Like he has to wait for it. The sister doesn't want him. The, the, the lady at the beginning, uh, they, they don't like themselves. They don't like each other. Yeah, she was more important too, but we cut her. That's like, it, it was just too much. So it's too little, many characters. It all ends that you know, reality is harsh for him. But since we're on... Half the time, maybe uh, in the, the fantastic world, it doesn't feel harsh. But at the end, we realize it was. It's a coping yeah. mechanism. Yeah. And I, I just wanted to ask you about the fact that the movie doesn't have any music. Was that something that was the case from the beginning? Or did that sort of come as a, a later in the production when you kind of decided, you know, this is better without any music? It's pretty much at the beginning. I remember I didn't want it because no. we wanted to be more raw maybe and it's like music can be great but at the same time sometimes it just pushes you too much in one direction that you must feel this right now and we did not want that we, the the most that we have is some sounds a little bit for example in a bathroom there's a droning kind of atmosphere but music i thought it would be even cheesy at the end it's like you don't need it to feel something. And this is a bit of a pet peeve some, some time of mine when I'm watching a, a, a show or, or a film and there's a lot of emotion, but then you have the music that drowns everything. It's like they really want you to feel that. And I think it 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 it, it actually takes me out of it. So uh, yeah. that we we tried it. We that was our main idea from the beginning. But uh most movie uh, starts with music, I think. I mean, uh, I have no percentage, but I feel that there's a music in the most uh, opening scenes. And we tried that. Maybe we did a day of research. What could it be? And oh, yeah, I forgot we, about that. Yeah, I don't remember the music, but we were just okay. looking at that. Yeah, no. no, no music. It's there. I think we may have tried at the end because, okay, maybe one song at the end would be great. But no, the the music, uh, maybe some great, great composer, of course, could uh, get that feeling like uh, Divadzi or uh, great composers like that. Uh, they nail the emotion perfectly. But um, yeah, that was not we necessary. stick to our idea that the, the, the song, the man, is reflex in the beginning was, okay, so every, what do you think? What about every character will have his own music? And yeah, no, no music. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the film is done. It's out there. People are seeing it. Uh, but you're still talking about it and you're also working on your next project. Can you talk a little bit about that transition from, you know, you've created this thing that's very personal to you. It's from your own experiences. And now there's this thing where you're sharing it with everybody else. And then you also kind of have to let it go a little bit yeah, because you need to move on to the next thing. Can you talk yeah. a little bit about that experience for you? Um, what's really special right now, I'm going to talk about a crab in a pool first. What's special is that we did not know what to expect and it works really well right now. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of success, so it's, it's, it's quite something. Because you work a lot, you work alone for like one year, two years, and you never know how people are going to like it or not. Is it going to play around the world or not? And so far, it's been really good. Um, and it's hard sometimes, I find, to 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 go back into the, the new movie. is very dark. It's much darker. 
And so it's hard sometimes to go from crab in a pool, which I find is very, it's actually light, even if it's, it's, it's a dark subject, but you know, the imagination, there's a, there's a playfulness, there's some joy and everything, but the one we're doing right now is really dark. So it's, it's hard. It's even hard to work on it like nonstop because it's, it's, there's not a lot of levity in it. There's not a, a lot of happy moment, but we're trying what we do is that we're trying also to do a bit of a different genre. So we're not like always repeating the same kind of stories or the same mode. So we're trying a little bit more horror, psychological horror for this one. Yeah. I would say that helps to separate also the two. So it doesn't overlap too much. There's also a continuity in the process because, um, like I said, when I read the first draft, it was very really emotional because uh, it was a lot of uh, souvenirs and uh, some from t- things we of our lives. Um, but it's not exactly our story, so we have to transpose. But remember what is the feeling and try to make the spectators live that feeling with the mo- most authenticity possible. And the next movie, we it's the same thing, but. We didn't really uh, experience what's happening because it's really not nice. So I. Uh, no, I won't but, talk about that. <laughs> no, no, we cannot spoil this one. But um, but we still have to 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 make it the most authentic as possible. We do have to like in uh, Crab in a Pool, it's a trauma, and uh, we have to go in our own trauma. And how do I, how did I live this trauma? And most of the time, uh, for myself. Uh, trauma uh, is something that I don't want to look at because it's painful. So I'm hiding it and I'm covering it and I don't want to think about it. And then when the idea comes, I'm chasing it out of my mind. But to be ex- able to um, tell the story of it, it's the, the reverse process. You have to dig it out and to relive things and even if it's not exa- the exact same story, the the, uh, the feelings can be um, around the same. Yeah. Um, so it's uh, the con- it's in that form that yeah. I think it's the continuity of the our process, and that's it's what was difficult to do uh, with the writing of both films. Yeah, but so, I, I think it's thinking like that. I think it's good that we have. A very good response with a crumb in the pool. First of all, it it just gives us uh, more certainty that okay, we're doing something in the right direction. Because like I said, you never know how people are going to react. And since our new film is so dark and it's <laughs> it's kind of depressing, it's good to have something more light and positive that's going on. Like, look, our yeah. baby is going very well right now, but. So it's worth it if we suffer from this other one. It's worth it because look, it's going well. And it's also um, a cheering because it's, again, a lot of really hard work. I always say uh, like the cashiers earning more money by the hours because of all the hours that we put. But when you see that, uh, okay, people care about, and it helps a lot, like... uh, our prize with you with uh, yeah it's so joyful we're, we're doing for something right so yeah it motivates <laughs> motivates us to to continue and yeah you know yeah we're 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 usually insecure I think it's artists we are insecure we doubt a lot because that that the, the worst would be if you open yourself and you're really sincere you know you can imagine if you're a kid doing that in class and you tell your own story and everybody laughs at you. It's, or just it's ignore a, you. Yeah, or worse, ignore you. It's, yeah. a, it's a nightmare. No, actually, no one cares or laughs at you. But thanks to uh, Spark and us. We see you. We see you. We care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. We love you. But, but really, the, the film is wonderful. Congratulations. Thank you for sharing you. so much insight into the making of it and for sharing so much of your time and of yourselves. Um, because it, it really is a great achievement. And now I'm very curious to see what you're working on now. So hopefully we'll see this at Spark, if not next year, the year after. We also. We also. <laughs> thank you. Thank you again for your time. It's been very, very lovely. And congratulations and best of luck 
uh, with, with the crab in the pool and with your new project. We can't wait to see it. Thank you so, so much. 